what are we painting today? What what is this image and where'd you get it? Um, this is as a, a place in Petaluma, California, which is about 45 minutes or so um, above San Francisco. And it's really interesting. It's by a place called Bodega Bay where Hitchcock filmed the birds. And um, this last January, I took a three-day painting class at Wendy Brayton studio um, in Petaluma. And this is her family's farm. And it was taught by Jim McVickers. And so um, these sheep were on their property and the house is in those is in the trees. And, and so I took a break and just went out there and it had amazing views and these sheep. And uh, I just clicked off a few images thinking I might want to do these sometime. Um, I used to paint sheep just because we raised them as kids. And so I feel like I'm kind of returning to them. So you raised sheep when you – you grew up in Bakersfield, right? I grew up in Bakersfield, and um, and I'm here right now. I mean, I live in Bakersfield. Mm -hmm. uh, but I lived kind of out in the country. My grandparents – my grandfather was a sheep herder from um, – family from France. And um, – but we did for 4-H. Uh, um, for 4-H, we had sheep uh, and pigs. We always had a horse. Um and we were always raising uh, dinner, meaning, you know, we had a, a butcher that came out and butchered, you know, a steer or a pig or something like that. And then, you know, we loaded up our freezer. I mean, we weren't like pioneers or anything, but I mean, that's just what we did out there, you know. And mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, we were raised knowing, you know, what was on our table and actually what its name was. Um <laughs> Not just steer, but if we named it something. But you know, it was it was all kind. Of, you know, it was on the up and up. We 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 knew that and respected it. And you know, so um, you know, I was glad about that. That's really great. Mm -hmm. I would really like to be able to get to that place someday. I don't know if it's going to be possible mm -hmm. because I I I know nothing really about hunting or butchering the animal myself i've always just sort of had the impulse that it might have more meaning um kind of getting nourishment and you know exactly where it came from yes and also that you know some as a young kid something's life you know besides our own dependent on us you know we we had to make sure it was fed and had water. You know, it was a hundred. Yeah. You know, today's going to be 103 here. And um, so, you know, we, we had that responsibility early on. And I think that was was really good. My dad wanted to make sure we knew how to work. And that was part of learning how to work. So, yeah, interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Uh, I, I grew up in Connecticut. My father... Uh -huh was a mechanic and we got all of our food from the grocery store <laughs> and uh -huh. I, I think he only went fishing one time that I remember and I only went fishing once um, a very sort of um, typical 80s suburban uh, mentality to food and work, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I'd only been to a farm a few times and that was mostly in the autumn for apples and apple cider, which they do up there. Mm -hmm. That was it. Mm. And since we've uh, been on the road, I think this is going on our 12th year, um, had a, wow. been able oh, to have a God. lot of experiences. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, that's pretty amazing right there. I have a dream of, you know, in, an, in the not-too-distant future of doing, like, van life for six to nine months out of the year. I'm not sure how to break that up yet, but um, anyways, I would like yeah. to do that. Well, very much for, so. For us, it was just taking the plunge and just getting rid of everything we had. And, um, it was a real kind of leap of faith and 
luckily for us, it worked out. We do know some other families who started and who just couldn't stay on the road for one reason or another. Uh-huh. Either family obligations or work obligations. Um, but it's definitely been worth it hanging in there. Good. Seen, seen some pretty amazing things. And it, it's nice to have a perspective on an entire, like, um, country. I mean, not Alaska and Hawaii, but the continental U.S., um, we know it relatively well. Yeah, I imagine so. And we get kind of a feeling for the seasons in different places. Mm-hmm. So, and are you following weather, so to speak? Like, do you like okay? We want to stay within uh, sixty-five and seventy-five degree days, <laughs> and so, or is it festivals or family or you know or all okay. of okay. It's it's a weird um, synthesis of all of the above. We mm-hmm. travel with some other families occasionally, sort of like a convoy of sorts um they have different jobs in different fields i I mean i'm pretty much the only traveling painter i know um so but our kids are all friends with their kids and so we do that and we have a general region that we stay uh for the specific time of year um Mm -hmm. And then whatever work kind of pops up. And I I was actually excited to go out to California to do uh, landscape painting and to check out some galleries. And I was going to put work a few different places. And there was the current plein air. (laughs) Yeah, um, there was the current plein air invitational, which you know a little bit about. Oh, I started it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. For yeah, I was so excited for you all and this year. Oh my gosh, I can't even tell you how amazing we had it set up. After five years, we go. I think we've learned something. And uh, oh, Homer. <laughs> Anyways, but you know, it's on. It's just on hold. That's all it is. It's on hold. Yeah. So, well. Yeah. You. I think you would. You would find Kern County. Fun. And interesting, we have we have a lot to paint. It's Kern mm-hmm. County is eight thousand square miles. That's and, a lot. And, um, so yeah, what it's a lot. What the uh, cities does it encompass? It, Bakersfield is that Fresno too, or no? Is, Fresno is, is in completely... Fresno County. No, you're not. Oh, okay. Fresno is uh, two hours north of us. Oh, and okay. So um, Fresno County is in Fresno County. And so, um, but Kern County has something like, uh, what do we have? Nine cities. So Bakersfield's okay. the biggest one and it's the ninth largest city in California. Um, it is conservative, um, based on where people immigrated from in the Dust Bowl days. Uh, we uh-huh. had, uh, almost 800,000 people to match our 8,000 square miles. Um, and we, so other cities are Arvin. Um, Delano, McFarland, Taft, uh, Tehachapi, Lake Isabella, and we have all of these regions too. You know, we have the Sierras, uh, Mojave Desert, uh, farmland, um, lakes. We That's have right. River. Yeah, we have all that stuff here. I was going to ask um, in in email correspondence how often painters got to the Mojave during previous uh, plein air fe- uh, festivals, because I think painting the desert is infinitely fun. Uh, I-, I didn't know whether you guys had r- ranges. No, I don't have or... ranges. And the Mojave Desert okay. and even Red Rock Canyon is about, from Bakersfield, about an hour, about an hour away, hour and 10 minutes. That's That's not not where that is. No, it is. It isn't. No. Um, and you know, we also have the Tejon Ranch, which is the largest contiguous uh, ranch in California, in United States. 
There's some larger ones uh, that are not contiguous, contiguous, you know, where they are, everything's connected. Yes. And we have that here that I, you know, get everyone permits to get on because um, it's quite, it's quite something and not every, it's not open to the public. And so we have that, that place, which is just phenomenal. But that landscape, you know, stretches all over the, you know, that part of the valley with the oak trees and then sycamores, conifers at a higher elevation. You know, mm -hmm. it is, it's kind of a subject matter person's dream here, if you like variety. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I was, well, I, I still am definitely excited to uh, see it and experience it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we actually um, were in Indio and Palm Springs when mm -hmm. uh, around January, and That's a good <laughs> yes, and we had planned on staying in the general area and working our way up uh, Pacific Coast Highway. And then oh, nice. over to Sacramento, and then across and down to um, you uh, around April. And yeah. we instead, because of the pandemic, we were in Arizona, and then we were kind of stuck for uh, six weeks in Sedona before we were able oh. to move along. Uh-huh. That's and pretty. That is a beautiful place. It it was nice. I mean, if you have to be stuck somewhere. Right. Yeah. yeah. It, <laughs> that's a deal. Right. Yeah. I am off to um, Mammoth tomorrow. Really? Yeah. We have we I have we have friends that have a house there and um, you know, old family friends and I go every mm -hmm. year you know around June Lake Mammoth um, Bishop and go paint for a week but the interesting thing tomorrow is um, going with another painter a friend of mine and um, we're going to the Bristol Cone National Forest have you ever heard of that yes it, I believe that we've been there oh you have the oldest living things on the planet yes those trees and my friend Lori she has never been there I said oh okay um, let's let's leave real early and, and go up to that 10,000 feet. You need to see them. They're just these these gigantic bonsais that have just they look like they've lived through you know heck their entire life. They're just amazing characters. And like they, my brother's an animator, um, and I always think of him like you can make these things move at night. You know, I just imagine them running or scurrying around because they're so mm -hmm. full of character. Who is he an animator with? Oh, does he's he, done he just do it? Okay. Um, he went to Cal Arts and uh, he was with Disney when they were still doing 2D and okay. um, you know they were still hand drawing and layers mm -hmm. of paper. And then he did you know he w worked on Pocahontas, uh, Hercules, um, uh, cool. Miko Flit. Then he went to then. Disney fired all of their 2D animators um, because it all went to computer. So he stayed home for a couple years, bought a computer, and started learning that, and then went to work for Sony and did um, uh, Kung Fu Panda, um, Surf's Up, uh, The Penguin. And mm -hmm. after that, he went to DreamWorks. Um, and worked for DreamWorks and did a bunch of things. And then he was just working with his friend Sergio, who was up for an Academy Award for um, Claws. Mm -hmm. And um, so he was freelancing with him. And so now he is uh, he's thinking about getting in a, a job. That one with Sergio in Spain was done. And now he's going to start uh, searching. And they all kind of know each other. So it's. And mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, they call about what projects are going on and things like that. So that's him. And so during this pandemic, we've been meeting halfway in between L.A. and Bakersfield. And we've been painting, you know, just out in trees and stuff like that. And, you know, had rattlesnakes. Oh, nice. Visit us today. And so, um, you know, yeah, it has been. We're about two years apart. So, okay. Uh, 
we we've kind of you know grown up together and you know, we're just we're good friends too. That's great. Yeah. So yeah, he's he's done a lot actually. So it looks like you have started with a lot of uh, kind of muted. Um, it looks like red and kind of um, warm gray. Is, yeah. is that how you normally go through and begin? Um, I use, I do I try to do a lot of grays. Um, mm-hmm. At the beginning, I always end up really bright, but um, I've been trying to tone that down and maybe stretch a little bit. This was in the evening, and my print is is uh, a lot warmer than the photograph. Um, okay. So I think that is is partly it. This was right in the evening in January, and the sun was low. And uh, in my photograph, uh, how it was printed, it, the oranges really came through strong. Um, so I probably should start to cool it off now. So it's less summer and a little bit more winter. Um, but, but, uh, and I, but I, yeah, I try to get those warmer. I also try to get the, you know, the red warm shadows up front and the cooler shadows and cooler, you know, grays in the back. So it's almost like that saves me a lot of detail and time. If I can just kind of place things where they're supposed to go, as far as that temperature goes. Um, hmm. I feel like I could, you know, I could move faster. Uh, yeah. yeah, I I don't rely a, too much on color temperature. I sort of have to wing it. Uh-huh. So I'm more of a, a form and direction. Uh-huh. person when I plan my pieces out and so this kind of feels pretty warm to me mm-hmm. and so I decided to use um, essentially a, a Zorn palette oh uh-huh. uh, yeah so I used a Payne's Gray and um, let's see, Cad Yellow Deep and um, a Quinacridone and Titanium and a Cad Light. So Mm. I'm hoping that I can visually figure it out with those colors. And the, the Payne's Gray that I have now because I'm using water soluble oil is uh-huh. kind of uh, not like my Payne's gray in normal oil. It went pretty blue pretty quick. So mm. that is interesting. I, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm looking at my piece right now thinking it really does look like I use blue when I just haven't. So ha- have you tried the water soluble oil? Um, yeah, I have, and I like that, I, I like that, um, I, I, I get stuck in things, and I don't go try stuff very often, um, Mm -hmm. I, I am a very stuck in my ways kind of person, or, you know, it took, you know, in graduate school, um, in North Carolina, when I kind of seriously started thinking about my master's in landscape architecture, but I, I had okay. been painting. So I took painting classes at the same time I was um, doing my design classes. And um, we can only use acrylic because of the fumes and everything from everyone painting back in the nineties. <laughs> and okay. so um, I didn't switch from acrylic to oils for a long time. And I wasn't, I don't even know why, I just like stuck with, I guess what I knew or feel like I, like I could never master that one. So it's like, I don't want to open up another jar or something. And then, but I finally did. And I was so glad I did. Um, Mm -hmm. And, uh, but 
you know, it takes me a long time to, like, I've had this palette of color for a long time, these about seven, eight colors, and, uh, you know, I'm like, okay, what would Payne's gray do to the whole thing? Can you handle that change, David? <laughs> or is it going to, what is that going to do to you? <laughs> Uh, well, I, I have some I, I, trouble with spontaneity. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I I couldn't have uh, I I didn't have the um, the accessibility to maintain colors when I first started working because I was painting and selling out on the street simultaneously, and uh -huh. I was perpetually broke. So yeah. I, I had to keep using whatever I could find. So yeah. my palette sometimes changed uh, on a daily basis. And there are a few times when I found all of the colors that I could use on sale, but they were a completely different type of paint. So oh, I, remember, yeah. I remember doing a lot of gouache pieces and going to Michael's and looking because I was all out of paint. And then I found a whole bunch of oil that was on sale. And I got an entire set of oil paints that were being discontinued for around $10. And then suddenly, I was, an, suddenly I was an oil painter sort of thing. <laughs> uh, I, I get that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> for so, sure. I do. Yeah. I, I do like a bargain, and I oh, yeah. think it's from being, you know, a, you know, a struggling student, art student, my entire life, and you know, working for nonprofits. It's yeah, that that does sway me. That will price and budget helps me make those changes. <laughs> helps yeah, me yeah. be a little bit more spontaneous, because you know, that has been a lot. Yeah, that influences me. I get that. Oh, so your day job, as you mentioned before, is as a landscape architect? Uh, no, my day job oh, okay. is running it is the e – I'm the executive director of the Arts Council of Kern, which um, oh, okay. is a county partner arts organization for Kern County, and we're part of the California Arts Council. And almost every county has one. Um, I do practice landscape architecture. I do a, that a lot on the side. I've been doing more painting than um, other things than that, you know, for the last couple of years, but I still do it. And um, but I was the assistant director for the Bakersfield Museum of Art for about 12 years, all their education programs and museum assistants and things like that. Not curating. That was another department. Mm -hmm. And then the Arts Council hired me. They'd lost their director. And it's about a 45-year organization. And um, so we needed a fundraiser because they were having – when I got there, they had uh, some financial issues. And um, so I, I've, I have always wanted to do a plein air festival. And um, – but everyone at the Bakersfield Museum of Art, we were – everyone was stretched so thin they couldn't take on one more thing. And so when I got this job at the Arts Council like seven years ago, I'm like, here's my chance. And it's not going to compete with any other, you know, fundraiser that anyone's doing uh, because no one is doing oh. that kind of in big schools. And so and I said, plus, it needs to be mission related and it has to be something that supports artists and also helps with, um, you know, I wanted people in Kern County and Bakersfield to have to cheerlead a little bit more for the community because we're our worst cheerleaders. Bakersfield, you know, is kind of the butt of a lot of jokes. And so I'm like, what if I bring these incredible artists here and they, they show us what they see. And it is, it has been huge. Yes. <laughs> you know, it, it is the butt of jokes from everyone I know who's from Bakersfield. So that makes oh, sense. Well, well, the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I try to be a cheerleader and go, do you know it, you could leave right now and be in Yosemite Valley in, you know, by noon? Do you, you know, we not only is it, a, you know, it's a, I, I think Bakersfield's good here, but I mean, we are so close to everything to do. I mean, it's, I'm downtown yeah. LA and an hour and a half to museums that are incredible and then come back and we have our own accredited museum. You know, 
we have the most amazing hiking. We have desert and pines and snow. I mean, we have all this stuff. And uh, and plus, you never know. You could be hit by a bus tomorrow. What you do? Spend the time complaining about where you live. Live it. And uh, yes. So you know. And I'm you know I'm a gay man from you know grew up in the 80s here. And so you know that was very turbulent, not very accepting time. And you know I always go if I could say it, anyone can. You know so. Hmm. Uh, you know, and it's, it's, it's come a long way. It's, it's getting there mm-hmm. for sure. And um, so, you know, I, I have a lot of hope for this place and it's, like I said, it's come a long way. It's, it's uh, as far as being an accepting place for diversity and um, you know, and I wanted to make a point that the arts council does that, you know, we, and my big thing about the Arts Council is to find jobs for artists, whether it's teaching in prisons or is it teaching in um, teaching uh, mental health, teaching in schools, um, you know, art jobs of all sorts that we get calls from companies that have an art job. And then, you know, I go, I make it happen and things like that. So because art is a vocation, we have the student loans to prove it. So. Um, you know, and I don't, right. I don't give it away for free, you know, when people call and stuff. I'm like, um, no, it's job. So uh, let's start talking about that. And um, Indeed. So that's where I come from and what I do. And uh, I never have the same day twice, and I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. And then, you know, I, in the last six years, I've met so many amazing painters that have introduced me to other amazing painters, you know, like yourself. And uh, that has been, I mean, and what is done for my own work and, you know, esteem for our county that I'm like, Gee, these are the people that are coming here. I go, these are the rock stars of the painting world. And, um, you know, the news follows us and all sorts of stuff. They're real excited. Cool. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm more of a sort of um, underground punk act right now, but I. <laughs> I, I really appreciate. <laughs> Hello. There. Hello. What happened? Oh, we had a little bit of a uh, audio video snafu there. Oh, okay. We <laughs> did not lose continuity, though. Good. So that's cool. Um, yeah, the I, I've only lost two videos so far uh-huh. from uh, technical error. So that's good, I guess. I can say. Uh, I, I've just started this, really. Um, uh-huh. The idea to do... Well, I just kind of randomly called it Paintcast back in 2017. And yeah. I posted a few videos, but I couldn't figure out if I could paint with other people. So I did this weird thing where I would do a painting, and then I would go into like uh, the iMovie program on my Mac, and then I would put it right next to me painting along with my previous video, but with different colors or with different tools, different brushes, uh, different scale. And I was doing all that to try to see um, if it was an entertaining enough, informative uh, enough format to kind of continue with and I sent it to a few people and uh, mostly other artists and they said it was funny more than anything else and uh-huh. I thought to myself well I'm, I'm not really a comedian this is not a comedy <laughs> act I'm, I'm not like trying out material and painting simultaneously um, mm-hmm. so I wasn't quite sure what to do with it. So I just kind of put it on the back burner. And then when I started the podcast with a friend from New Orleans, Bonnie, um, she just 
had begun to be a daily painter. And um, so I thought it would be interesting perspective to talk to her about her weekly struggles. And uh, so I just kind of named that podcast Paintcast as well. And then we were talking one day and I told her the original um, inception of the idea. And she said, oh, we should definitely do that and put that on YouTube. Yeah. So, so then I've been trying it out and I've been doing it since June and people who are um, watching this right now can actually go back and see, I think I have one or two of the original um, videos from a few years ago uh-huh. up there and I'm, I'm still figuring everything out because it's, it's extremely weird to paint and talk at the same time. And I must say, I've been watching you do things, and it's really interesting how you move your brush around. However, uh-huh. your video just shifted, and I can only see half your painting now. Oh, well, that's not good. Wrong way? Wrong way. There we go. Okay. Is that it? <laughs> yes. You're back, on the, you're back in the pasture? Yes. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I, I, I like the way it's um, beginning to glow. I and it rely was a very heavily. Glowy moment. Yeah. I well, remember it looks that it. distinctively, and, and because you know it's about 20 miles or from, um, you know, the, the northern California coast that, uh, and mm-hmm. there's a lot more moisture, so the haze from the ocean was coming in. You know, Bakersfield's so dry that you know, we we don't have that kind of atmosphere. You know, we one really. Uh, <laughs> strange thing that we are known for which is really horrible we have the worst air quality in the world i mean not in the world in in the united states is mm-hmm. right here in beautiful bakersfield kern county and it's because of it's mostly because of the environment that we are at the end of the san joaquin valley and we're surrounded on three sides by mountains so it's a big bowl and stuff travels down you know, the valley and it gets stuck here and the pandemic has actually cleared it up because there's less traffic and less pollution producing things out and so mm-hmm. we've had more blue skies than ever yes I, I think I heard that on a few other podcasts a few months ago that people all over California were just amazed at how clear the weather was and how the smell in the air changed a little bit even yeah yeah definitely yeah that is very true <laughs> so uh, it's a and yeah it well, is something that we do struggle with here but i'll tell you what for sunsets and stuff you know for painters that pollution does some makes some really interesting sunsets and sunrises <laughs> It does. You get atmospheric yes. perspective uh, on a whole nother level. I have enough photos for the next four or five years worth of sunset paintings just from spending a few months over the past few years um, staying on or near uh, PCH. And mm-hmm. I, I did um, a series of over 100 cityscapes from wow. my my photos of Los Angeles, they're uh-huh. mostly um, oh, those are beautiful. Small like traffic scenes, mm-hmm. and i i tried to uh, I tried to get some regions that were very unusual, um, and yeah, that was a lot of fun too. See, an, another thing too is. It, it's really interesting to see you uh, go over and use all your soft edges because with me, I do so much scraping that uh-huh. brushwork really isn't um, a time beneficial element for me. I kind of draw with my palette knife that I use. Uh-huh. And I scrape things down, and I'm using multiple layers, and I'm 
sometimes I'm just really confused. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to hear that, you know, I'm not the only one. I've started doing more scraping and, uh, and then going back and then I've, stu- you know, sometimes I'll get a, uh, a too hard of an edge in the background. I have that kind of a problem. And so things become mm. kind of flat. And so, and my husband, he's not a painter, but we've been together so long that he can go by the painting room and, and just with one sentence, you know, sum up what needs to happen. Um, as just uh, someone that has looked at art for a while, he go, nope, those are too stiff. Nope, you need to break that up. Nope, you know, don't touch that. That is good. Don't touch it. Don't lose that. You know, he's he's that yeah. kind of, uh, he's a really good in-house coach that, you know, is not telling me what I want to hear. For sure, after 23 years, you stop telling someone what they want to hear. Um, and it's more of a, let me help you out with that kind of thing. And, um, you know, that, That's that is really helpful yeah. to me. Yeah. My, I actually met my wife at art school, so she is also a painter. So oh, I, run, okay. I, I, I run things by her all the time. And <clears throat> she was a lot more... Um, sort of forthcoming initially when we were in New Orleans, when she was doing all my painting for me, giving me advice. Oh. And, uh-huh. and now that I'm just responsible for doing all of it, she just uh, kind of lets me wallow in my ears. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was going to ask you if your husband also painted. No, um, he... He did banking for... He was a banker for 30 years, and then oh, he wow. was just done and so Mm -hmm. um he has gotten into cactus and succulents and they're everywhere and and, uh he has them in a few stores and then he also works um for a local nursery here and Mm -hmm. um so it's exact opposite of what he did for so long and he just pretty much loves it he you know he does cactus for different people or succulents he'll do um he'll he, like I said, he has a few coffee shops that he supplies the plants and sells them in, and a few stores mm-hmm. he supplies plants and sells them in. And, you know, I tell you what, he's a much happier person than, you know, when he was all, you know, in the banks and everything. That was, it was kind of stressful. Yeah. That wasn't his, that wasn't where he was supposed to be his entire life. So it's, it's good that we made it work that didn't have to. Hmm. Um, yeah, so. I, I, I've, I've been speaking recently with a few um, different painters, um, actually just the other day with a painter from Los Angeles, her name is Justine, and we were laughing about how unemployable we are in general. <laughs> <laughs> After being in the arts and uh, kind of being spoiled being able to make a living at some mm-hmm. points, like especially um, during the night markets uh, when they were big in New Orleans. And now we just kind of ha- have this feeling that um, there is no other way. <laughs> uh huh. Okay, so. You're wandering just a little bit again. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if that's your if you have a zoom on there or if the phone is just moving because you have headphones on. I think it's because I have the phone so close and I've been tapping it a little bit. Oh, so, OK. Uh, I think that's what it is. Um, it's OK. So, it, it, well, is that better? Yes, it's a lot better than forgetting and um like I did and just having the picture reversed and Uh having a photo of the top of my head and my hat. Oh yeah. Um, Yeah. That sounds exactly like something I do (laughs) (laughs) and just could hear the, could hear the people logging off. (laughs) Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's funny. (laughs) um, Oh, that's a good one. (laughs) So, uh, you paint a lot of trees. Is is that sort of your main 
um, uh, interest, or is it just happen to be things that you were that you have for reference photos? I think it's it's partly both. Um, okay. I I I like to try some seascapes. Uh, I'm in I'm on the my mom lives at the beach, and so I go there a lot. But um, I think. No, I do. I do like trees, and I've been. I've really been trying to perfect over the years my palm tree. We have, you know, we have a ton of palm trees here in Bakersfield, mm. and so I did one whole series of the most pitiful, beat up palm trees, you know. And actually, mm. you know, they somehow resonated with people because, you know, they 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 sold pretty well, and there was some, you know, they weren't they weren't your L.A you know, Burbank palm trees. These were like struggling in cracks of concrete and all that <laughs> sort of stuff. And, uh, but you know, they, they're a little bit like those Bristol Co. pines. They, they had a lot of personality and, and road wear on them. Um, mm-hmm. and you know, th- and there's some really interesting eucalyptus stands throughout Kern County. And I grew up around, uh, eucalyptus stands. And so, um, I, I like those a lot. Plus, you know, I go to the Eastern Sierras and, you know, uh, there in the Owens Valley on the way, there's a lot of cottonwood trees. And uh, I, I do like trees. I tried to get into some buildings, some cityscapes. And, uh, you know, I, guess, I don't know if I'm all over the place or, or what. But um, one interesting thing, uh, my friend Lori, who I'm going to the Eastern Sierras Mammoth with tomorrow, she turned me on to a show that's called <laughs> the uh, Portrait Artist of the Year, and it's a uh, it's a UK show about painting portraits, and you know each person that wins that round is going to a semifinalist, and you know they get chosen because of their self portrait, and then you know you watch this hour show of them painting a portrait, nine people, and we are going to do that just the two of us in Mammoth this weekend, and we are not portrait painters to save our lives. And, uh, and I'm thinking, you know, it could only help. It'll make me, I'll probably see something so bad that I'm like, stick to landscapes or it'll help my landscapes. Um, I don't, you know, so we're going to try to do that. And, you know, I, I think that the UK competition, uh, shows, they're so much more civilized and friendly to each other. And that's, <laughs> And it's just a good lesson in kindness to watch these people compete against each other. You know, they cry when their their fellow painter or baker gets kicked off because they just, you know, they they all root for each other. And it's so such a wonderful feeling to watch those shows. And I learn yes. more not being caught up in their drama. And, you know, I watch these people do these portraits and I'm like, wow, I've you know, I learned so much from them. And it's all different styles and mediums, too. You know, there's some people that are doing portraits with ballpoint pens. So it's mm-hmm. and all ages and not all professional artists. And so, you know, boy, did I just give them a plug? Um, but they're worth the plug. Anyhow. <laughs> yeah. So we are doing I, that. That sounds like fun. Uh, I I have been wanting to see at least one episode of that show, but I have not been able to get to it. Um, I'm, I'm like in a weird, um, viewing situation. I'm sure where I don't always have signal. And when I do, um, I, I kind of bounce around from show to show. So I think Uh I'm due to watch finales of maybe, six different Netflix shows that yeah. I haven't gotten around to yet. Um, and I really have to before I start anything else. I, I, I feel a sense of um, it, uh, almost like I expect one of my grade school teachers to pull me aside and have a little talk with me. Oh, and, uh, follow up reprimand. About, hey, you need to catch yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this show is on where I find it is on um, YouTube. Okay. And uh, I I'm not sure where to find it any other place, but um, YouTube and you know just uh, 
the portrait painter of the year. So anyhow, if that helps you get to it sooner, yeah, easier. Great. Yeah, it it's a great show, most definitely. And um, so, and they have an audience too, and they they have to talk sometimes while they're painting as well. So mm -hmm. um, they're experiencing a little bit of, or they're doing a little bit of what we're experiencing right now. Yes. Are, are you going I, to are, are are you going to put any green on on your painting or what? Uh, my lighting. I don't know. <laughs> Um, like Do I you said, have my, green image, on there? my image is really on the warm side, and so I okay. probably haven't put any. Um, oh, okay. I, I wanted because to... gr green is my least favorite part of a landscape, so I'm struggling to keep everything fairly warm here, and I, I was just wondering uh, <laughs> where you were. <laughs> I, I think I need to to actually mix up yellow and even put yellow on top, maybe with a brush. Uh, I'm I'm used to doing all these and trying to figure out how to finish within the hour time, so I'll right. take a lot of weird shortcuts. And of course, guests who come on do not have to finish and sign, and it's more of a challenge for myself. Um, to be able to just kind of get it done. Um, right. But it, 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 it's also, it, it's really interesting to see how you begin and how you sort of work through um, your colors and your shapes. And there's plenty of time for you to finish this afterwards before we do the final image uh, thing for the YouTube video. So... There's no rush. Just I, I probably need to get it. I probably just shifted it a little bit. I need to see it in a little more light. Right there. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think I, I put the, the conifers that are back there. Um, these these bigger pines need a little bit of that green. Mm. I keep trying to squint because I, I'm working fairly small. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm working on a six by six cradle panel, and normally I'll be I, I I would be able to sort of take it and hold it in my palm and move it around as I apply paint, but that's not really great for these type of videos. So. Oh, no. Yeah, I do that, too. I, I walk and look at it from different angles in the room, yeah. and, um, and I'm on a 9 by 12. Okay. Yeah, I, I probably should have gone a little bit larger for this type of image, but I, I thought when I looked at it, I said to myself, you know – you might be able to pull it off. And now that I'm <laughs> close to being done, I know I definitely should have gone larger. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I went too small, you could even tell mine would be sheep. So I, um, <laughs> I, well, I want to, I want to halfway get, you know, the animal to maybe, you know, someone could guess within three or four types of animals. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you're working quick, even from reference, um, to me at least, uh, it takes a long time to be able to uh, proficiently distinguish certain types of animals, especially ones who are grazing. And mm. it is really common uh, to have cows that look like sheep and sheep that look like uh, llamas and everything Isn't it else. amazing how, like, just two little movements could make something go into a whole new species? <laughs> yeah. That is something that I, yeah, I'm like, oh, I just went from 
bovine to Amazon jungle animal and uh, with no intent to do that. <laughs> yeah. I, I have a ton of paintings of um, sheep and I took them back in the 90s when I was uh, traveling um, in Ireland and uh, I, st I did some extended stays there and so many of them are such great sweeping images and I just know in the back of my head that I will not be able to pull this off because the scale has to be large like it needs to sort of um, be a three foot by four foot painting right yeah I, yeah I get uh, that it, it's, it's just not going to do it justice mm -hmm. yeah it's going to need you know so that you you get that oh and what's so interesting are that you have these things that are grazing and then you I know they're, mine they, too. Oh, they're they are there in the most beautiful landscape and they're looking down and um mm. and i'm just like that that is i don't know if it makes the landscape greater because of the of the 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 mammal, you know, like we are looking, you know, they're looking down when they are in the middle of this thing that, you know, people from all over the world, you know, plan to go see, you know, some mm. sort of vista or, or, you know, view and it changes their lives. And then here are these things that are just looking down at the ground for survival in the middle of it. When we sometimes view those as life changing moments in our life by being at a place like that, you know, this trip to this workshop I took really, you know, it changed my painting. And so when I think back, I'm like, this is a very inspirational place. Then there's these sheep and they're just, their heads are just down, just going along in their day. They're going to do this every day. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I think I, 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 I heard, on myself. <laughs> I, I think I heard someone call it majestic indifference on one of those. Oh, that is a great term. Wildlife shows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Um, yeah, and you know, people go safaris and all that kind of stuff to see animals mm. do this. And and um, you know, and when we've gone on vacation, my husband has. You know, we might be sitting there on the shore at the beach on the last night. He goes, "This is going to go on tomorrow when we leave. It happens every day, every hour of the day. They don't turn it off when we leave." And uh, yeah. I thought that was a weird thing to say, and I think about that. I go, if I'm stressed or something, I'll go, you know, that beach, those waves are going in and out right now. That's just what they're doing. They didn't turn mm -hmm. it off, you know, and there's some sort of peace in that weird thought about, you know, life is beyond my little bit of stress right now. There's very calm moments, and I could return to those moments in my brain and find that peace or inspiration or, guess what, you're not so important that you've stopped waves going back and forth. They're still doing that. Get over yourself and uh, get to work. <laughs> you know, it, inspiration and you know, it's all for all sorts of things. Yeah, I, I think there's an inherent um, kind of lack of um, natural awareness in the very fact that when you go out and paint and you have all of your supplies and you're kind of concerned about bugs and the weather and your image and everything that every other creature is concerned with is not within your radar suddenly. Mm -hmm. And then, um, to me, there's always a funny realization of what it looks like I'm doing to the cows that I'm painting, if I'm painting cows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I keep on uh, trying to back up a little in my seat here. I'm, I'm actually painting in my passenger uh 
front seat of my motor coach. Oh, wow. Okay. So I have this kind of strange setup, and I can lean back and get far enough away. For, for these small images, I can get maybe two and a half feet and begin to blur my vision a little bit. Mm-hmm. But that's about it. <laughs> and, and it's tough when I start to put some of the smaller um, pieces of paint on. And, yeah, I think I might be just about uh, done with mine. I, oh, good. So, I... so often it comes to a point where uh, I've gone too fast with these little studies. And uh-huh. my mind has wandered so much just asking you questions and listening to what people have to say and then uh-huh. um, responding back. That it's it's more of a stream of consciousness piece, and less of something that I would do if I were just on my own painting. Right. Um, I I like this experience because I in in my head or you know with music, and you know I mm-hmm. listen to a lot of music when I paint, um, and I think this has helped me be. Oh, you know, freer, so to speak, um, less caught up cool. in second guessing, which is something I do, uh, having the time limit and your voice in my ears is help me let go. Um, <laughs> cool. That's good. Yeah. And, um, so I'm not, I'm not fully, I, I'm okay with this painting. Good. <laughs> uh, and um, and I know my Robert would go, uh, that is a lot of big brushstrokes for you. That's he, he would probably say, that's how I want you to paint. There you go. He's always said, loosen up, tight, tight, tight. Yeah. And um, <sighs> it, yeah. And without some of those suggestions, you know, who knows how long it might have helped, you know, taken me to figure that out it's one reason why I like to do workshops about once a year I feel like Mm -hmm. I I learn faster because if I had to figure that out oh my gosh I might not ever get there um I I have yet to actually take a workshop oh my gosh they helped me so much yeah and uh you know because most of the time when I paint you know I paint after work um on weekends uh, when I go to a workshop, you know, it's five days of just intensive painting and being around people that are intensively painting, and I don't have to take my painting hat off, you know. When I'm done for the day, eat a little something, uh, go to bed, get up, and I'm back in it really fast. And so, um, you know, working my 40, even though it's in the arts, it takes, you know, I'm not in my painting for five days at a time. And that's another reason why I do this trip every day, every year, like tomorrow. It's to, it's so that I don't have to change hats. You know, it's, it's mm-hmm. right there. Um, and, uh, that's, I, I like that. I, I, I appreciate, you know, the workshops and the different perspectives and someone, you know, tweaking what I'm doing or making monumental changes, you know, Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. Uh, I just um here that are bugging me. I, I, I wouldn't know what to do in a workshop. <laughs> I, I think eventually I will take one. Mm-hmm. But um God help the instructor. <laughs> Maybe you just need a one day. Start, start yes. with a one day. See what, <laughs> what that does. Because there are those. You can go take an eight-hour one and go, okay. Uh, <laughs> might be might be what the painting doctor ordered. You know, a little stretch. Hey, it's been awesome talking to you, David. Could oh, you please? Oh, thank you. Good. I just, huh? Oh, because it's been an hour. Can you tell right. the audience how to uh, 
see more of your work, find out more about you? Do you have a website? Uh, I do. It's David Gordon Designs. Um, it's constantly, you know, needing uh, work. Um, and so David Gordon Designs. And then my Instagram, where I um, post recent work more consistently, is at David Gordon Designs. Um, so you could you could see uh, pictures of Kern County in California um, that I like to do at those two spots. Great. I, I look forward to painting with you in person, David. Oh, good. Thank you. I was just thrilled that you asked me to do this. And, uh, you know, it, it uh, made me feel really good. So I appreciate it. And your work is, is amazing. And when I study it, I feel like I, you know, I get some, I get uh, courage to put more paint on and, and be, I don't know, freer. That's been a word of the hour. Uh, so, yeah, you are an inspiration and a beautiful painter. You're very kind, sir. Uh, Thank well, you so much. You made that happen. <laughs> Thanks Have for supporting all of us by doing this. You got it. <laughs>